Welcome to My Mushroom Health, Fungi You Can Feel. Today in this short video we're going to be talking a little bit about combining magic mushrooms and cannabis at the same time and whether or not it is safe to do so. Let's go ahead and get started with the abstract here. So this subject is being discussed more lately due to the overwhelming interest in psilocybin and the many benefits of microdosing for PTSD, chronic anxiety, and depression. Below, we will break down the materials, their effects, and the receptors to help people who are considering the combination of magic mushrooms and cannabis in a safe setting. There are medicinal study links on our website and in the description below here at this video. So let's start with cannabis effects. The effects of cannabis can vary widely depending on several factors, including the dose, the strain, and the potency. Your method of consumption also matters. Edibles versus ingestibles versus vaping or inhalation, and your tolerance and how often you use the substance. Now remember, in some of our other videos we talk about this, THC does build up in the brain, unlike CBD or cannabidiol. So because THC does tend to build up in the brain, the more you use it, the more it will build up, potentially making changes to brain chemistry. So let's go ahead and go into the method here. When smoked or vaporized, the effects will kick in within minutes of use due to the decarboxylation or the burning of the material. This is really what activates THC. The experience peaks at around one hour and dissipates within two to three hours on average. And for anyone who consumes too much and begins to feel paranoid, which is about 20% of the population that use cannabis, the best way to reduce this is to consume a moderate dose of pure CBD, which can counteract the high and the paranoia. And we suggest approximately 100 milligrams. We'll go into the reason why here in a moment when we talk a little bit more about receptors. Next slide, so cannabis edibles. Edibles take longer to strike these receptors within 30 to 60 minutes as they modulate through the liver. So it just takes a little bit more time when you eat these molecules. And some people feel more focused and productive after consuming cannabis while others feel more relaxed. Again, each person's metabolism is unique. So a strain for one person may not affect the other person the same. So when someone tells you, hey, I got this great strain of cannabis, it makes me feel so sharp and so focused, you should do it. You should try the same strain. Don't jump at it because their brain is very different than your brain. And of course, testing is wise to see which strain is best for you, the individual. Now, pot side effects, they can be many and we'll touch on them here. Dry mouth is one. That tends to be more the higher dosage you take, the more likely dry mouth can occur. Rapid heart rate for some people. Euphoria, obviously. Openness to new ideas. Anxiety and paranoia, again, for some when they take too much. More intense sensory perceptions of colors, sound, flavors, and touch. And for some people, increased appetite, they do get the munchies. Also, a reduction in nausea because of THC striking specific receptors that control the vagus nerve. And this is the reason for cancer patients to use cannabis to help with nausea if they are undergoing chemotherapy or radiation. Now, let's move over to mushrooms. While there are many types of hallucinogenic mushrooms, most are a variety of the species Psilocybe cubensis, which contains the psychedelic compound psilocybin. Just as with cannabis, mushrooms can alter sensory perception at the right dose. Mushrooms are usually dried and then eaten. They can be steeped as a tea or ground into a powder or placed in capsules or even put into a great tasting gummy, uh, which we do sell here at mymushroomhealth.com. So 
the effects. Well, the mushroom or magic mushroom effects. The psychological effects can take one hour or more to kick in, and they tend to build slowly. The entire experience can last for four to six hours. Psilocybin decreases activity in areas of the brain responsible for constraining your experiences and keeping them orderly. This process deactivates your perception of the world around you and your fear tends to dissipate. This occurs when stationary objects might appear to move or melt and images and people may appear distorted or they may light up or you may see colors and your perception of time and yourself actually changes. So again, caution when used. Next slide, magic mushroom effects. For some, these effects can lead to spiritual epiphanies and philosophical breakthroughs. This is referred to as losing the ego. It only tends to happen on high dosages when people are really tripping, which must be done in a safe setting, people. Do not think about doing this alone. For others, they can cause discomfort or paranoia and an increase in fear, again, typically for more type A people who do not want to relinquish control of their surroundings. Other potential effects include fluctuating body temperature, euphoria, anxiety, increased heart rate, and for some, muscle twitching. All right, now let's move on to symptoms. Some people experience nausea and possible vomiting 30 to 60 minutes after consuming magic mushrooms, especially when taking too much too quick. But this usually subsides after an hour or so. Some state that consumption of more sugar can speed up the metabolic process, but there are no clinical studies on this as of yet. Now, comparing the two, cannabis and mushrooms, well, they can both affect your perception of the world, but in different degrees. As stated before, the specific strain of cannabis or the type of mushrooms you use can affect the experience. Consuming high quantities of cannabis, edibles, or high THC strains can produce effects that more closely mirror those of mushrooms. When people get extremely high, they can uh, hallucinate. And taking a low dose of magic mushrooms might be similar to a small dose of cannabis, and a microdose typically does not cause any impairment at all and is more designed to subtly relax the mind and reduce stress. We do have an entire page on our website about microdosing magic mushrooms, so check that out. Now, taking them both at the same time. When used at the same time, mushrooms effects are peaking uh, around two hours or so cannabis can add to the overall intensity of the experience. When used three to four hours, when effects of the mushrooms begin to fade, cannabis can slightly prolong the experience and help you contextualize the experience according to anecdotal reports and empirical data from people that use the products. But again, no specific studies at this time. Now let's go into the risks. Combining cannabis and mushrooms doesn't appear to pose any serious health risks as far as the brain or nervous system goes. But still, the set and setting you are in while going through this combined experience can be dangerous if you're at a concert or perhaps leaning over a balcony while being intoxicated, so be very, very careful. Remember, the loss of fear and lightheadedness can be a risk, so be sure to be responsible and be in a safe setting if you are going to partake with these two molecules. Risks number two, it is best to stick with one or the other, at least until you know how your mind and body react to each substance on their own, and of course your tolerance. 10 milligrams of THC can make one person feel just slightly altered, and others can be very high and even dizzy. The elderly should always ask questions before buying cannabis, for pain as dispensary staff are typically just selling and not necessarily educating. We want to make note here, doctors take note that CBD is much safer than THC for the elderly, especially for pain because it has no psychotropic effects. Now let's go into those effects. Let's talk about the 
cannabis or pot receptors. There are two main endocannabinoid receptors, CB1 receptors, which are mostly found in the central nervous system, which is your brain and spinal cord, and then CB2 receptors, which are mostly found in your peripheral nervous system, especially the immune cells. So they are found outside the brain, outside the spine. They're more in the organs, especially in the gut, okay, and stimulated by the vagus nerve. So the cannabinoid receptors are in fact G protein coupled receptors that are activated by CBD, CBG, and CBN, which are non-psychotropic cannabinoids. And of course, THC, they all influence serotonin receptors in the brain. But remember here, bottom bullet point, CBD strikes more of the peripheral nerves because it's not psychoactive, which is why it tends to be more anti-inflammatory. THC doesn't have any anti-inflammatory benefits. So keep that in mind, depending on what your condition is. Now, psilocybin receptors. Psilocybin is rapidly converted in the body to psilocybin, which is also an agonist for several serotonin receptors, which are also known as 5-HT1-alpha, or written out here, 5 alpha hydroxytryptamine receptors in the brain. This means they both stimulate the same receptors, multiplying and increasing mind-altering events. So take caution when combining these two molecules. And conclusion, again, our advice is to always go slow. Take the time to understand how your body reacts to the molecules before combining these two natural drugs. Never consume magic mushrooms or THC when you're on prescription meds. There are a lot of prescription meds that can be influenced in bad ways with these drugs. Okay, so keep an eye on that. And we do have study links again on our website. And thanks so much for listening. Hopefully this gave you some information to at least consider or be cautious of. Hope you're all doing well. And remember, do something nice for somebody you don't even know today. There's not enough of that in the world right now.